It's the start of a new season with new hopes, new rivalries, new riders, and as always, some incredible competition as the best male and female freestyle kiteboarders in the world begin their new season with a brand new GKA Freestyle World Tour, an amalgamation at the end of 2018 between the GKA Kiteboarding Air Games World Tour and the World Kiteboarding Championships. The newly unified GKA Freestyle World Tour will see a blend of formats according to venues and events over the coming years in a quest to find the most complete freestyle rider. It all begins with the Mondial du Vent, a prestigious wind event that is now in its 23rd year and considered one of the world's largest and most renowned kiteboarding events. The 2019 festival will stage round one of the newly amalgamated GKA Freestyle World Tour, which kicks off the new year with a GKA Freestyle World Cup look at. Uh, yeah, the first stop of the year is always really tricky because everyone has been training really hard and uh, you don't really know what, what are your level compared to the other, so everyone is a big threat right now and then we have a big French team as well, really really strong, so you have to give your best. The world's top freestyle talent will once again converge on the scenic corner of France's Occitanie region along the shores of the French Mediterranean. Le Cat is famous among kiteboarding circles for its distinctive northwesterly wind, the Tramontana. The conditions here are among the most challenging in the world, while the side offshore wind conditions are ideal for spectators, allowing them front row seats as the action unfolds. The GKA Freestyle World Cup Le Cat will be judged on 100% freestyle, technical unhooked tricks, no hooked in big air, and it includes a new countdown system. This year we have something new on the format, competition format. We got a countdown for every trick attempt that the riders will perform. So that means they will have, for now we will try with one minute, and they will have one minute to perform their tricks. Last year we had four tacks. They had four tacks to perform their tricks. And it's different to do a tack for 50 meters than 200 meters. So it will slow down the whole process of the competition. Now they will have a bit more time pressure, but the good thing is that it will speed up everything. The men's event features 40 riders with 16 riders competing in the women's competition. The name that towers over the men's field is three-time defending world champion Carlos Mario of Brazil, who ended up winning every event in 2018 to earn him the world title last season. But there's some serious talent that will be out to try and snatch a win from the brilliant Brazilian. One big name to look out for is former world champion Liam Whaley of Spain, winner of the last event held in Le Cat in 2017, since last year's event was cancelled due to low winds. Now it's a new season, I've had the whole pre-season to train and, and prepare to get ready for this event. I'm super amped, finally we're going to get some action in and hopefully I can, I can show you guys what I've learned. But perhaps the biggest challenge will come from a slew of talented newcomers who dominated the tour last year, including world runner-up Adjuri Corniel of the Dominican Republic, Maxime Chablot of Switzerland, Valentin Rodriguez of Colombia, Italian Gianmaria Cocolutto, and of course, Carlos Mario's fellow Brazilian, world number three, Sesh Teixeira, and his fellow veteran and former world champion, Spaniard Alex Pastor. Winds proved disappointing the first few days in Le Cat, and the event had to be moved to where there were better and stronger winds. Uh, well, the conditions here are like, we changed spot to the sea, so we're, we have more waves, we have a bit of current, so that's going to make it challenging, but the wind is pretty steady, it's not too strong, it's for 13 or 11. So yeah, it's pretty good. It was a talent-packed field of riders with plenty of action in the early rounds as the big names all made it through safely. The riders that stood out were Valentin Rodriguez, Gianmaria Cocoluto, Maxime Chablot, and Frenchman Valgarat, all of whom won their round three heats to advance into round four, where there was a big upset as young Mexican Anta Roca won heat 18 at the expense of world number two, Ajuri Corniel. Also unable to make it into the semis was Brazilian Alex Neto, who was edged out by Maxime Chablot. 
At the end of four hard-fought rounds, the final eight semifinalists were an impressive mix of veteran former champions like Liam Whaley, Alex Pastor, Sesh Teixeira and Carlos Mario, alongside the best up-and-coming talent in the world, with the likes of Rodriguez, Chablo, Cocoluto and Raka. The stage was set for a brilliant showdown. On the women's side of the action, current freestyle world champion 14-year-old Michele Sol had a brilliant year in 2018, the wunderkind claiming her first world title, winning every event last season. This year I have a lot more pressure because I was the world champion last year and uh, I'm feeling really good about this year. The conditions today look really nice and uh, hopefully we're going to have a great time. She's been training extremely hard for this first event of the season, but she will have some tough competition from her rivals, like world runner-up Francesca Bagnoli of Italy, who almost beat Seoul in the last event of 2018 in Brazil, and also world number three Paula Novotna from Czech Republic, along with the likes of world number four Rita Arnaus from Spain and Pippa van Eersel of the Netherlands. And last but not least, Mika Sol will compete against her fellow Brazilian and the 2016 and 2017 world champion Bruna Kajia, who's back in action at Lukat. So last year I didn't compete because I had a knee injury, so I had surgery on it and it was like a recovery year for me. And this is my first event and it's actually one of the first times I'm kiting again. So I did a lot of gym work on my knee, so I feel prepared on that sense but I'm here to take it easy and maybe do one or two heats and not take too many risks so I can compete the rest of the year. In the early heats of the women's draw, round one heat winners Kajia, Novotna, Bagnoli went straight through to the semis, joined by a surprise name, Osaya Redding of France, who beat both Maureen Castel and Francesca Bagnoli in very strong and tough wind conditions where riders struggled to land a trick, let alone get a decent score in the 40 knot winds. In round two, the tough wind conditions persisted, but in the end, Pippa van Eersel, Teresa Tabel, Francesca Bagnoli, and Claudia Leon made it through at the expense of world number four, Rita Arnaus. The women's semifinals were on. The field of 16 have down to eight, with conditions significantly calmer. Well, it looks very nice, conditions look be much better and water looks flat, so it's insane to be in the semi-final and let's kill it. Dutch rider Pippa van Eersel went out in fine form, nailing her first trick, a 6.2 backside 313, before repeating the good scores on her second and third tricks, a 6.27 S-bent to blind, and a 313 that put her firmly in the lead, essentially guaranteeing a final spot. Claudia Leon had a terrible start with two crashes before the Spaniard found her rhythm with a couple of decent four-pointers, which was enough to put her ahead of Paula Novotna, who, despite a 5.5-313 on her second trick, crashed four of her six attempts. In a very low-scoring semi-final heat, Van Eersel and Leon went through to their first-ever finals. Novotna and Redding eliminated in the semis, Redding only managing one scoring trick of six. Yeah, I feel really good about the final. This is my second final ever, so yeah, it's really good. And hers as well, Mine I think. Too. But it's really <laughs> yeah. cool, and we're teammates, so yeah, that's even more cool. In the second women's semi final, it was Bagnoli, Tabo, Mika Sol, and Bruna Kajia fighting for the two remaining final spots. <laughs> Teresa Tabo had a tough time of it in the conditions, a 5.7 S bent to blind, the only respite for her as she crashed out in the semis. But world number two, Francesca Bagnoli, was ready to go, and she first nailed a couple of four-pointers on her first tricks before scoring an excellent 7.83 off a slim on her fourth trick to lead the heat. Behind Bagnoli were two world champion Brazilians, Mika Sol, the defending world champion, and former multiple world champion, Bruna Kajia. But both riders had a terrible start, two crashes apiece, and it became a battle of who could get a scoring trick in to make the top two in the heat. Finally, Bruna Kajia landed a 4.5 blind judge, and Sol felt the pressure, consoled by her coach, as she went out to take on Kajia. 
she landed a great 5.77 backside 313, nudging ahead of her fellow world champion. Then Kajia followed her previous trick with an even better Espenta blind for 5.97, and once again the pressure is on Mika Sol. Mika Sol kept her nerve, focused, and produced an excellent slim 5 for 6.93. What a score! Just what the defending world champion needed, and all eyes were again on Bruna Kajia. Huge air from Kajia. Can she land it? Oh no! Kajia crashes out on her fifth trick and Sol seals it with a brilliant 6.93 slim five and that sends her through to the finals with heat winner Bagnoli. It was a really tough heat, uh, the conditions were really hard and uh, I mean everybody's riding really good uh, and it was really fun. Uh, congratulations to Francesca, she did a really good job. Well, I'm feeling pretty good. I had some problem with my knee in the heat before and my mind was a bit like scared. But like I said, okay, you are in a semi-final, just go for it. And it's what I did. And I'm happy to be in the final with this little shredder. <laughs>Conditions were rough come semi-final time as the final eight riders moved 20 miles south of Le Cat to the beach at La Franqui, where they prepared to do battle in winds in excess of 40 knots, opting for seven meter kites. Yeah, it seems like the wind's super, super strong. We're getting crazy uh, conditions, big waves, so yeah, let's try to do our best. In the first men's semi-final heat, it was Maxime Chablo, Valentin Rodriguez, Alex Pastor, and Anta Raka. Maxime Chablot, who's used to riding the Levant winds, did well from the get-go, the Swiss rider producing a solid back mode 5 for 6.3 and a slim 5 for 5.4, pretty much the best you could hope for in these conditions. But Colombian youngster Valentin Rodriguez was also in fine form with a 5.87 slim 5 and a 5.4315 along with a couple of 4-pointers with just one crash. Despite a solid start with three scoring tricks to kick things off, former world champion Alex Pastor struggled at the end, crashing his last four attempts, while Anta Raka also had a dismal time of it, unable to score anything above a three-pointer as the waves and winds proved a daunting obstacle. So the heat was like, I think the hardest heat I had since probably two years, for two years now, because it was so strong. I think we had gusts up to 40, even 40 plus knots. Well, yeah, the conditions are, I think, the strongest wind I ever ride in my life. And yeah, we're trying to do like basic tricks that I was doing like three, four years ago, but we made it to the final. It was sick riding there, but crazy conditions. In the second men's semi final, it was Carlos Mario, Liam Whaley, Jean Maria Cocoluto, and Sesh Teixeira. All eyes were on Carlos Mario, the three-time defending world champion went out and once again had an excellent start to his heat, mastering the elements to produce solid scores as he raced ahead with two six-pointers, including a 6.43 slim and a very impressive 7.67 heart attack, setting the pace for the semi-final heat. Mario's fellow Brazilian, world number three, Sesh Teixeira, was in trouble from trick one, and although things looked up with a 4.23 slim on his second trick, Two subsequent crashes effectively ended his semi-final chances. There was, however, high drama in the battle for second place and a final spot in the semi-final heat between former world champion Liam Whaley and Italian youngster Gian Maria Cocoluto. The riders both went for the same trick, a front blind mob. Whaley landed a very good one, 6.97, before the Italian went out and responded with an impressive 6.43, showing Whaley he was up for the challenge as both riders earned six pointers to kick the session off. Whaley regrouped by trick four with a good 6.57 kite loop and then a crow mob five for 5.8, which put him into second position. Cocoluto had trouble on his fourth trick, only earning 4.63 off a slim before he kept his nerve and landed a very good Chrome Mob 5 for 6.67 and that kept the Italian in the running. So it was all down to the final tricks. Cocoluto went out first and with all the pressure on him, he was able to land a 6.47 back Mob. That meant that Liam Whaley needed to score a good six pointer if he was to make it through. Cocoluto waited nervously to see what Whaley would do. 
the Spaniard went out, did a back move, but it was only 5.3. Whaley is eliminated. Cocolito is in his first ever finals. The conditions are really hard, was really hard, but all the riders did all the tricks, and I'm really so to be in the final for my first time. Uh, let's see what's gonna happen in the final. Yeah, the heat was really close to Liam. Uh, at the end, I landed the back more five with good score. Uh, he crashed in his back more five, so I made it. The women's final of the GK Freestyle World Cup look at four riders left. Mika Sol, Francesca Bagnoli, Claudia Leon, and Pippa Van Eersel. Winds are up, the waves are big, the kites are small, the stakes are high. The conditions are uh, really tough. It's a strong wind, up to uh, 30 to 38 knots sometimes. And um, yeah, it's going to be uh, bigger, even bigger. Huh? The conditions proved a huge challenge as all the riders crashed their first trick attempts with only Claudia Leon getting a meager 1.07 off a of Rayleigh. It was obvious that whoever landed a solid attempt would have a huge advantage and all four riders felt they had a shot. And yet the second tricks were all also very low scoring affairs in the ones and twos as the pressure was building to see who would land that first solid score and pull ahead of the others. Mika Sol produces a front roll for 1.3. Van Eersel goes for an S-bend for 2.23, which is the highest score so far. Bagnoli gets a 1.33 for a Rayleigh as the riders go for simple tricks. Into the third tricks and things get worse and worse for world champion Michele Sol as she crashes her third trick attempt with Leon getting another low score off a front roll. But then it was Francesca Bagnoli who stepped things up with the first proper score, an excellent 6.53 blind judge giving the Italian a solid lead as Van Eersel also crashed her third trick. The fourth tricks were again a series of falls and crashes with only Bagnoli scoring a 1.27 front roll. Simple stuff, but she knows every point counts here. Mika Sol knew she needed to come up with some big moves if she was to have a shot, but she had to make do with a 2.17 S-bend and then it was Bagnoli's turn. Bagnoli goes for a slim, what a move! She lands at 8.6! That pretty much seals the win for the Italian. She knows she's got it. Mika Sol surprises everyone on her last trick with a 9.3 heart attack. Too little too late for the win, but it nabs her the runner-up position ahead of Claudia Leon, whose 6.59 blind judge gets her third ahead of Van Eersel. Bagnoli crashes her last trick, but it makes no difference. She has it all wrapped up already. I, oh my God, I have no words, seriously. I'm pretty happy with my performance. I was so scared at the beginning because I was riding with seven and the wind was pretty strong, but then I, I, feel, I felt confident in the water and then after my blind judge, I was like, Okay, you can do it. Just keep your mind clean and you'll do, you'll do great. And it was good. The finals are over. Italian Francesca Bagnoli is the 2019 GKA Freestyle World Cup Le Cats champion. Mika Sol runner-up and Claudia Leon edging out Pippa Van Eersel for the third step of the podium. What a win, her first ever on the tour for Bagnoli. The men's final of the GKA Freestyle World Cup Le Cat would be held in 35 knot wins and judges extended the trick allowance time from 1 minute to 90 seconds considering the difficult conditions as the best 4 tricks of the 7 total per rider would count toward their final results. 4 men left, Carlos Mario, Maxime Chablo, Valentin Rodriguez and Jean-Maria Cocoluto, one objective to win the Mondial de Vent. 
Maxime Chablot, the current junior world champion, kicked things off in style with a tight 5.73 off a back mope 5. Gianmaria Coccoluto was riding hard, and he started with a front blind for 4.1, knowing any points are good points in these conditions. Rough start for Valentin Rodriguez with a crash on his first trick. Carlos Mario was in good form, going for a slim five and earning a good 6.9 score to take the lead from the start. On the second tricks, Chablo was able to overcome the conditions for a 4.23 slim, but Cocoluto and Rodriguez got the better of Chablo, both riders going for a back mope 5, with Cocoluto nailing a 6.27, and Rodriguez coming up with a great 6.73 to make up for that opening crash. Carlos Mario went out next, using his skill and experience to go for a magnificent heart attack, and he landed at 8.17, Super Mario in the lead. Chablo has a tough time responding, unable to get a score, crashing out. But Mario also runs into trouble. It's not often you see him crash, but this time the conditions got the better of him, and that gave Chablo some respite. While Chablo and Mario struggled, Cocoluto continued the solid start with another decent score, a 5.37 S-Bend backside one, while Rodriguez also produced a solid score for a 5.87 Slim 5. Three tricks down, four to go. Maxime Chablo, can he take advantage of that Mario crash and put the pressure on the Brazilian? Chablo goes for the heart attack. It's huge, look at that hair, but can he land it? Yes, he lands it, 7.27. Maxime Chablo snatches the lead from Carlos Mario. The Swiss youngster is on top. Carlos Mario tries to respond, but once again, the Brazilian suffers a crash. Winds and waves prove very tough to handle. And the crashes just keep coming. Both Rodriguez and Cocoluto crashing out on their fourth and fifth tricks, with Chablo then crashing his fifth as well, while Mario only manages a 3.77 kite loop as Chablo keeps his lead. The four riders are down to the final two tricks apiece, and it's time to make calculations and opt for the tricks that will earn them crucial points as the GKA Freestyle World Cup Locat goes down to the wire. Maxime Chablo is focused and determined. He wants to win his first ever event. Chablo goes for it. A huge 315. It is good. Very good. 8.43. That is incredible. The only man left who can catch him is Carlos Mario. Can the Brazilian do it? Mario rises to the challenge, knowing a crash could end it for him. But he comes through with a very good 6.53 Hinterberger frontside, and it's all down to the final tricks between Chablo and Mario. Whoever gets the higher score in the last attempt takes the title here. There he goes, Maxime Chablo, can he do it? Big air, oh no, it's a crash. Chablo is heartbroken. He was so close to winning his first ever title. Carlos Mario knows he just needs a decent score, and sure enough, he produces a no-frills 4.87 front blind to seal the deal by just 0.81. Chablo congratulates his rival and friend as Carlos Mario continues his winning streak with yet another victory. This was a very tough week, and congratulations to all the guys. They did their best in these difficult conditions. The winds were very strong, the water very choppy. I'm very happy to win here, even though I used a seven meter kite, which I almost never use. So I'm even more stoked about coming in first. I'm very happy. Carlos Mario is the GKA Freestyle World Cup Locat champion for 2019. Chablo runner up in Locat with Valentin Rodriguez just edging out Cocoluto for third place in what was a very tough and hard fought final for all four riders who were all separated by less than seven points. That concludes a brilliant 23rd Mondial du Vent as the GKA Freestyle World Cup Locat comes to a close. See you next round.